Hey, I'm Pastor Mike, and thank you so much for taking time to check out this message. And I hope that it inspires you. I hope it pushes you either towards a relationship with Jesus or further along in your relationship with Jesus. But we would never want this message to replace the reality of what it means to be involved with a local church. Although I'm excited that you're checking this out and I, and I hope it speaks to you, let me encourage you that you need to be involved in a local body. There's something to the fact that you need to be under the authority of the spiritual lead of a pastor and involved in a community that can push you uh, further along. We are meant to be in community. So enjoy this message, but let me encourage you to be seeking an opportunity to be involved with a local church. I'm going to jump into this topic today. And I got to be honest, this topic is, is one of those topics for me personally. Um, if you, if you hang around with a pastor long enough or you follow a pastor long enough, you're going to hear that they have a certain tendency towards certain messages, right? They're, they're going to have a certain tendency towards things. And I do a preaching calendar specifically because I want to make sure I don't leave out the things that are not sort of my thing. Does that make any sense? But can I tell you today is one of my things. Um, and the reason it's one of my things is because it's something I did really, really badly in the past. And I'm working so hard for it to be better in my own life. So let me jump in. We'll get to, to what it is in just a second. But let me review because we're doing words of wisdom and we're studying Proverbs. And I hope you're reading Proverbs with us. Whatever the proverb chapter of the day is, we're reading that proverb of that day. But Proverbs 4 and 7 says this. And this is what we started with kind of as a thesis for this whole series. Wisdom is what? Wisdom is what? Supreme. Wisdom is is supreme that it's, it's all about wisdom right it's not about knowledge knowledge will help you build a house wisdom helps you to make a home right there's wisdom we need God's wisdom and it says therefore get wisdom though it costs you all you have and I would say it to you this way write the check right though it costs you all that you have write the check right get understanding so week one we use the verse in Proverbs 9 and 10 that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so we said, okay, if we're going to start to have wisdom, if we're going to go down that road, well, then, then, then we've got to start with fear of the Lord. What is fear of the Lord? Well, it's not, oh, my gosh, he's going to strike me down. I'm terrible and horrible, and how woe is me. That's not fear of the Lord. It's, it's, it's awe. It's reverence. Right? It's, it's, it's what Amber was trying to encourage us to do in that moment in that song when she said, no, 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 stop the reality of the words we're about to say, right? In other words, you can worship with no awe. Does, does that make sense? Are you following me? You can sing the song because you're like, oh, I love this song. This is a great song. I love this song, right? Or you can engage your Heavenly Father. You can engage God in a way where you, you really grasp again. You get back to like you heard it for the first time because how many of you guys have been in church for a long time? And how many of us kind of get to the place where, honestly, the sayings get old? The words get a little bit dry. The, the things that we say, like, you know, Jesus died on the cross for me. And if you grew up in church, you've heard that phrase a lot. But the reality of it is, is to stop and think about someone dying for you. You know? Death is, death is a weird thing, and, and unfortunately, we experience death this week. Uh, one of our elders, Don Buckner and Misty Buckner, and they have been instrumental in the launch of this church. Um, and Misty, honestly, I've said it to her, I don't know how many times I've said it to her, I don't know how I would have done it without her. Uh, because she's one of those running around making sure everything's getting done, you know, and things are where they should be from the very beginning of the church. But they, their, 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 their grandson died in, in a, just a tragic accident. I was at the hospital with them when they turned off the, the machines on Monday night. And, um, and there's just not a lot to say. Today is the, today's the, the memorial service, and so if you don't know that, you're welcome and invited to go over to Faith Lutheran, which is at 2 o'clock today. Um, but, uh, but it's amazing what death will do to bring reality, right? As I've talked to Don and, and Misty and even the kids over the, the last few days, it's amazing how different their focus right now is. Are you following what I'm saying? 
like nothing else matters. Like, like Don is trying to do this Made in America trade show thing, and it is huge, right? I mean, like, they're trying to get the president there, so it's huge, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's big, and yet, you know what, right now, it just doesn't matter, right? And sometimes we lose an understanding of who God is because it just gets rote and dry and normal, right? And it takes a little something to jar us. It takes a little something to refocus us today. And today, man, I'm hoping that, that God does that to you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so our words of wisdom for week one were, when I understand what it means to fear God, I can live fearlessly. Right? When I understand what it means to fear God, I can live fearlessly. And then last week, last week we did Proverbs 9 and 9. Instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. So our word of wisdom from last week was, the habit of a teachable spirit produces a life of consistent wisdom. That we start with fear of the Lord. Healthy, awe-inspiring. I've got this, like, when God walks in the room, I don't go, yo, what up, big boy? No, 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 no. Right? You know, like, I, I really don't like those t-shirts. I'm not dogging on anybody, but I really don't like those t-shirts is my homeboy. Jesus is not your homeboy. Jesus is the creator of the universe, right? And, and so we, we, we need a little awe. We need a little bit of reverence, right? We, we've got to come at God with a little bit of awe and reverence and awe. And then we've got to have a teachable spirit. And boy, uh, I've gotten some messages this week. I stepped on your toes a little bit last week, talking about what it means to have a, a teachable spirit. But I'm excited about today's topic and let me say these words, if you will hear today's message and apply it to your life, it has the potential to change your life in an unbelievably significant way. I believe that strongly about the words that you're about to hear. So let me say, please don't take today just as another sermon. Don't just take it lightly. You're here on Mother's Day and you're already thinking, man, I, you know, we've got that reservation, but I hope we meet the, meet the Baptist for lunch and... Right? I'm, I'm already moving on. No, no, no. Can I ask you for the next few minutes to take on a teachable spirit? To say, God, help me to clear my mind. Ladies, you've got a million things to do and you've got a million ideas, but can you for just the next few minutes? Because the, the, this topic, I think, is one of the most significant topics of a culture. Every one of us wants to be better in every area of our life. I want to be a better mom, I want to be a better dad, I want to be a better student, I want to be a better business person, a better neighbor, a better friend, have more influence, be a better spouse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I believe you can do all those things and actually many, many more if you take on the spirit of honor. The spirit of honor. What it means to actually honor. I think we're living in a generation now that actually it's become normal to dishonor. And I want you to be very, very careful over the next few minutes because it's popular for comedians and TV shows to dishonor people. Um, it's almost as if you dishonor, right? Like, like, let's have a show and let's see who can diss each other the worst. Like, like... And, and if that person, if you're the most dishonoring, well, you get a bigger platform and you get a bigger microphone and you're celebrated for that. And so let me ask you to be really, really careful because our culture is pushing a spirit of dishonor. Now, when I say that, you immediately think about what other people are doing. So let me ask you not to make it a Passover message. This is not for your neighbors. I ask you to be teachable and, 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 and a little bit open and not look and consider anyone else. It's not for your spouse. It's not for your kids. It's not for those people at work. This is about me saying, and I'm going to ask you to be really honest with yourself and say, God, would you show me a mirror today of anywhere where I carry a spirit of dishonor? Anywhere that, that I am not honoring in the way that you would have me be. See, because honor is not just doing what you're told, right? How many of you know that 
you can dishonor while you're doing what you were told to do. Right? Like when, when you tell a, tell a kid, uh, would you go take out the trash? And they're like, I got to take out the trash all way. How come she didn't have to take out the trash? Then they go take out the trash. They did it, but they didn't do it with honor. As a matter of fact, one of my wife's favorite sayings that she used to use when she was a teacher here at Leesburg High School was, you know, they went to sucking the butter off their teeth. You know what that means? Somebody tells you to do something. Right? And i got to be honest, when I was growing up, if you sucked the butter off your teeth, eventually you're going to miss one. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> See, we've grown up, and I grew up in a time, and many of you, especially you older folks, grew up in a time where we were forced to honor. Right? Well, honor was something that was pushed on us. Um, and then there was a backlash. We backlashed against it. We said, I don't want to be made to do this. I need a little bit more freedom and a free spirit to me. And so now we're more worried about how people feel. But here's what I need you to say. Listen to me. If we allow our children to dishonor us, then it's only a matter of time before they lose a job because they think they deserve to be heard. Come on, guys. Right? Proverbs 29 and 23. A man's pride brings him low. But a man of a lowly spirit gains honor. That proverb, listen to me, a man of a lowly spirit gains honor. You know what I got out of that? Here's here's what I got out of that. Honor is not something to seek or find. And yet that's what our culture and really a lot of us, and we need to be honest with ourselves. Like Mike has to check himself because right now God's done a lot of great things and I'm the chaplain of the Leesburg Police Department, right? So, so tomorrow morning I go in, and my new office at the police department is waiting and ready for me. She calls Friday. And it's real easy to go, <laughs> yeah, I'll come by my office at the police department, right? It's real easy for us to chase and look for honor and recognition. And, and what happens is, is if we use honor in that way, then honor is just an idol. You know what an idol is? An idol is something that we, we put up as something we desire more than we actually desire God. And so listen, honor is not something we chase. Honor is not something we find. Honor is something we practice. Honor is a heart issue for me. And honor is a heart issue for you. And so I want to talk today, and I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will kind of help us a little bit today, because we talk about honoring our moms, And yet, let me go back to the beginning there, right? Step on the toes a little bit, sorry. But how come it was all moms here setting up this morning? How come it was a mom running the vacuum cleaner? Right? And and, and, and at some point, listen to me, gentlemen. If it's Mother's Day, it's Mother's Day. If it's President's Day, it's President's Day. Are you you following what I'm saying? Honor Honor is a state of our heart. Not just something we do, and I and I got to be honest. I'm prepping this lesson, getting ready to talk to you, and I'm thinking, man, this is like a preachy in your face kind of message I got working here, right? And I'm thinking about what I had planned for Jennifer for Mother's Day. Nothing. Nothing. Like we got to be here at six in the morning, and she's got to set up, and then her mom's coming, and her sister and her mom are the ones that are doing photographs for for you guys later on today, and then we're taking them out to lunch. And so last night I said to her, "Let me take you out to dinner tonight." And she's like, "You forget, we got the viewing for Landon, and the kids are going here, so they're not going to be with us." And I and I really I had to check myself and go, "Where's the honor, and what is honor?" So let me let me answer that question. What is honor? If it's not something to seek, if it's not something to find, if it's something that I practice, how do I actually do that? Here's your, here's your fill in here. Honor begins with God's claim on someone else. Honor begins with God's claim on someone else. Okay, so in other words, if God has put someone in... Well, let, me, let me back up. Is God in charge of all things? Is God sovereign? Is there ever a day where God wakes up late? 
It goes, oh, 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 crud, I got to get to work. Well, no. God is in charge of all things. God is sovereign. God never sleeps. God never jumps off of his throne and goes, oh, my gosh, what's going on? Never happens. So if that's the case, the people who are in charge of things in your life, God has them there. So when we speak against people who are in authority, and let me break it down to a small level, when we speak against our kids' teachers, or our teachers, when we speak against our coach, when we speak against anyone who's in authority, we're in that moment denying the reality that God's in charge. That is a disrespecting of God himself. Because if he is sovereign and if he's in charge of all things, then he has put all in place. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute. That dude's a jerk. Well, you, you don't understand. My boss is just a dictator and this and blah, blah, blah. Listen to me. Maybe God's working on something in you. And you keep running around the same mountain because you're not participating with him because you have a spirit of dishonor in the way that you act and respond to that person. Right? Listen, listen to this verse, Romans 8 and 30. And those he predestined, in other words, he's in charge, he got it all figured it out beforehand. He also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? Come on, think of somebody right now that you just think, I do not know why they're in charge of whatever. Maybe you're looking at it. <laughs> That's okay. I don't either, okay? But God, who knows all things, who has all things worked out, is working and moving and doing something great and would like for us to participate. But our spirit of dishonor takes us out of the equation. Honor is, is a heart issue for me. Honor is not something I seek and find. Honor is something that I'm to be giving. Let me give you this as another, what is honor? Honor honor is decided, not deserved. Honor is decided, not deserved. Is there anyone on the planet who's not a sinner? No. So does anyone deserve honor? Not really. The only person who deserves honor is Jesus because it's Jesus through them that does anything of any worth and any good. Right? Mike doesn't deserve your honor. I don't deserve your honor. I, I can tell you who I am. You can sit with me. i got plenty of weaknesses and warts, and you'll come to know them the more you get to know me. I don't deserve your honor. You decide to honor me because God has let me be the pastor right now. Just like your boss, your coach, your teacher, your spouse, they, they don't deserve your honor because they're sinners. But we decide to give honor. Why? Because we decide to honor God. What did we say? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If I have fear for Him then I am in awe and wonder of how he is working his story the way he's decided, no matter what I think or who I think. We all would put different people in different places. Maybe you would put a different president in the White House, but God decided that. Maybe you're a Republican, and when Obama was in, you had a spirit of dishonor. And he didn't stop and say, this is, this is who God put here for now for some reason, and pray for that person. And so see, honor is not something we deserve, it's something we decide. Students, decide to honor your teachers, even though you feel like they're picking on you. Even though you feel like they're, they're rude to you or whatever. We decide to give honor to our parents. Are there any perfect parents here? Please raise your hand. Any perfect parents? Perfect parents. Anyone? 
Anybody? Anybody out there? Perfect parent? No, there are no such thing as perfect parents. Right? We don't give them honor because they deserve it. We give them honor because we've decided to respect the fact that God made them our mom and dad. So for those of you who hear me on this, that struggle with, maybe you're an adult child with a parent and you're struggling. Can I say to you, they're never going to deserve it. You have to decide to give it. That's what it means for us to have a spirit of honor within us, right? 1 Peter 2 and 13. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake. Catch that. Underline that. For, the, what, for whose sake? For the Lord's sake. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men. That's kind of a bummer, let's be honest, right? Like, let's stop for a minute. Let's pretend like it's not Sunday and you don't need to amen. You're sitting in your living room sitting in your cubicle at work, your office, and I say to you, everyone is in authority. It's been put in place by God right now. That's a tough one. Would you not agree? And yet the reality is, listen to me, honor has nothing to do with them. Honor has everything to do with me. It has everything to do with me and my relationship with God. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong or to commend those who do right. Listen to me. You may not like things that police officers do. It doesn't matter. God put those authorities in place to protect you and to punish those who do things wrong. So we have to have a spirit of honor, not because any one man deserves it, but because we've decided in our heart to honor God who puts all authorities in place. Right? For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence ignorant talk of foolish men. Listen to me, your spirit of honor is a witness. When you honor anyway, people look at you and go, that dude's, that dude's a jerk. Why, why are you being nice? Right? Because we live in a culture now that says don't be nice. Keyboard courage. Right? I'm just going to blast somebody. I'm just going to say what I think and and go, no, 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 foolish. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. You have freedom. Are you grateful for your freedom in Jesus Christ? But not freedom to do whatever you want. Right? Freedom to be who he has created us to be. Freedom to submit to him and to live out the life that he's created us to be. Freedom is not the ability to do whatever I want. Freedom is the ability to become who I was created to be. Under the creator of the universe. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God. Honor the king. Let me give you a quick list. I came up and and I left just a little bit of space there at the bottom if you want to jot down these. But I was thinking of, okay, well, who should we honor? Like, Like, let me give you some specifics of some thoughts, and, 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 and the first overarching of all of them is just others, right? The Bible tells us that when it talks about the Good Samaritan. The, 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 what is, who is my neighbor? And it, it tells the story, like, whoever's in trouble, even if they're your enemy. And so, and so others, like, we've got to change our mentality. We've got to be different. We've got to break free from this culture of dishonor that says, what? I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure where this happens, but have you noticed in our culture now these days, once you draw a line, in other words, once you decide I'm Democrat or Republican, or I am for gay rights or not for gay rights, or I am for abortion or not for abortion, once you make a decision like that, did you notice in our culture today it's kind of expected that you hate the other side? And that's a spirit of dishonor. That is a total spirit of dishonor when we don't say it's, it's, it's okay for somebody else to think the way they think. And it's dysfunctional for me, Mike, to think that I'm supposed to fix everyone. My job is not to fix everyone. I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. My job is to love everyone. And let Jesus begin to work on their heart. Let the Holy Spirit begin to do a work inside of them. Few few people that we should honor. One is authority. Authority. So here's a question. Why has God put bad authority in your life? 
Anybody got any bad authority in your life? Anybody struggling? All right, ladies, it's Mother's Day. Anybody struggling with your marriage? Sometimes you struggle with the decisions that the spiritual leader of your home makes. Because I'll tell you right now, not a husband in here deserves your honor. We're a mess. We'll admit it. We're little boys trying to figure out what it it means to be a man, and we act all big and macho, but on the inside we're going, I don't know. Right? But he doesn't deserve your honor. You decide to give him honor. And when you do that, he'll become the man that he should be. I've said it for a long time. My wife makes me want to be a better man. She does. From the very beginning of our marriage, just who she is and the way she does things makes me want to be a better man. Let me ask you, are you making your husband want to be a better man or are you making him want to run? Because it's an honor or dishonor, right? How about, how about any other bad authorities? You know, anybody ever had a bad boss? Come on, no one's ever had a bad boss here, right? We're all holy Christians, but those people out there get bad bosses. Why does God put bad authority? And I think this is the answer. Listen to me, so important. Because he's trying to clean up your heart. He puts you in that position. And he says, let me see if you can learn to have a spirit of honor let me, let me put you in this position and show you what it means to actually have the ability to say, I don't like what they're doing. I think you can go so far as to say, I really don't like them. The Bible says you got to love them. The Bible doesn't say you got to like them. But will I honor? Will I speak well of? Will I walk away at the water cooler when everybody's talking about the boss? Or the decision that was made. Or that, see, see, the spirit, so authority. Someone else that we need to honor is his parents. Come on, kids. Listen to me. You've got to honor, you've got to honor, you've got to honor your parents. <laughs> Not all parents are the Cosby's. But how did that turn out? In other words, the facade that you think your family is going to be this perfect, wonderful place, and the facade that you think everyone else's family is probably way more structured and healthier than you, that's a facade. We're all a mess. Look at your neighbor and say, I know your family's a mess. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right? Right? All right, so, so let's push that aside and say this. Again, do my parents deserve honor? Maybe not. Because there are people just like me and they're struggling. Jen and I are struggling just like every other parent to try to be better at parenting. And some days we stink. Can I get an amen on that one? You didn't have to amen that hard about us. So you don't deserve, you decide. You decide. How about age? We honor our elders. So can I say this? There's a few of you here. I'm going to step on your toes a little bit. There's I'm doing that a lot today. It's kind of good. Please allow our kids to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, to you. Listen, listen, listen. I know you're from the north. I know you're like, that's a southern thing. I can't stand that. I corrected Mark today. He told Crescenda over here in the hallway. She said yes, sir, and he's like, don't say sir. That's my dad. I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to talk about it in the sermon today. Pay attention. Right? Listen, 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 listen. It's, it's not an age thing, it's an honoring thing. Please allow them to learn honor. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, like, we need to do a better job of that. I say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am to most everyone who's older than me. I just do that. And, and as a matter of fact, most of you, and you'll know this if you're older than me, I don't call you by your first name. I'll say Miss Marlene. And I don't mean that to say, well, you're old, right? That's, right? That's, but listen to me, it's, it's a matter of honor. It's a matter of respect. Young people, listen to me. Show honor, decide to show honor to someone older than you. They may have more for you than you realize. If you will get outside of a spirit of dishonor and get into a spirit of honor, you might receive more from them than you actually realize. 
age is something we should honor. Another, so this one will come out of the blue for somebody. What should we, show, what should we honor? Nature. Listen, Christians should be some of the best environmentalists. If we're in Lake County, somebody just went, I ain't going to be no tree hugger, Pastor Mike. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is God gave us this creation, right, that we might take care of it. It's a resource for us to steward, right? And listen to me. I'm with you. Like people are like, no, you know, I'm a vegan and I love animals. And I love animals too. Most of the time, medium. You know what I mean? I'll get email on that one. But... But, but listen, but listen, but the reality is, is we should be stewards of what God has given us in nature. And then the last, of course, is, is God. Am I honoring God with my life, with my attitude? And the Buckner family could say right now, I don't feel like God deserves my honor because I don't know why he let this happen. But remember, we don't give honor because it's deserved. We give honor because we decide. And so they step into, I I don't know why it happened, but you're God and I honor you anyway. Even through my pain, even through my struggle, no matter what's going on in my life. Let me give you three things, and this is how I'm going to close the teaching today. Three things. How do we, how do we actually honor? How, How can you actually put it into play? And I'm hoping that tomorrow morning, maybe this afternoon, we need to start. Amen? But, but that, how can we get out of and maybe recognize inside of us we have a spirit of dishonor? This just came out of the blue, popped into my head. How do you know you have a spirit of dishonor if you need to do a little self-examination? If you're offended very often, you have a spirit of dishonor. If you're like... You, you, you hit these, these things that you're just like, I can't believe they did that, or they said that, and that. Rah, 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 rah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whose heart is it troubled in that moment? Right? The, the, the reality. So how do we do this? How can we get out of that? Romans 12 and 10. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. This is not in your notes, but honor one another above yourself. That's the, that's the word of God. Honor one another above yourself. How do we do this? How do we practically do this this afternoon, tomorrow morning? Number one, you're going to have to prioritize others. You're going to have to prioritize others. In other words, I've got to get out of myself. I've got to get out of my agenda and my desire and my wants and prioritize others. And I struggle with this one, if I'm honest. Anybody else kind of like that type A personality, and I'm getting it done, and I got a list, and I'm plowing through my list, and I will run you over getting my list done? And I can so be like that so easily. And yet we've got to slow down. Maybe you need to put on your mirror in the morning. People are more important than tasks. Souls are more important than checklists. Right? Matthew 22 and 36. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. We talked about that fear of the Lord, right? The beginning of wisdom. And then it says, And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law of the prophets. Why are you on this blue blob? Why did you just take the breath you just took? Why why is it? And you are here to work out your salvation by serving others. That's why you're still here. Otherwise, when we got saved, we would just get beamed up. Beam me up, Scotty, right? But no... Jesus died for me, and I accept him as my Savior, and now I turn around, and while I'm working out my salvation, and I got plenty of stuff to work out. Anybody else got plenty of stuff to work out? Right? We got plenty of stuff to work out. But in that process, I can sit and focus on me. I can worry about me. I can, oh, I'm this and that. Or I can get up off my butt and go serve somebody else. 
Because when I get my eyes off of me and work on somebody else, I think Jesus works on us and everything changes. Right? That we focus on others. We prioritize other people. Number two, praise others. Praise others. Let that one hang for a minute. Did you praise people this week? Or did you talk about everything that they were doing wrong? Did I spend more time this week going, wow, look at that. They, They did this. And it isn't amazing that you get around somebody negative and you can go, Wow, look at that. that that's kind of cool. And they go, yeah, but you should have done this. You should have done him. <laughs> right? That's a spirit of dishonor. That's a spirit of dishonor inside of us. We need to start to praise other people. Can I challenge you this week to try as best you can when you encounter other people to come up with one or two things that are positive about that person before you go anywhere else? Right? That, that, you, that, you, that you think the best of that you realize that they're created in God's image and they are where they are today because God has them in that place. But it's so funny because there's people, come on, we get around people that are negative. People are like, like black holes, you know what I mean? They're hoovers. It just sucks the life out of you, right? Because of the negativity. and so We, 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 we need to speak life. We need, we need to praise other people, James 3 and 9. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my Did you see what John did yesterday? I cannot believe my teacher wrote me up for that. I can't believe that police officer pulled me over and gave me a ticket. Were you speeding? Yeah, but I can't believe he gave me a ticket. Right? That, that we would learn to, to change Ephesians 4.29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God that we grieve God's heart when we talk about somebody who's made in his image. Does anyone deserve our honor? No. It's not the argument. I hope I've thrown that argument out the window today. Are you hearing me? It's a decision. I decide because I trust God. Now quickly we can get negative. Can I, can I ask you, could, would you please, 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 this week, try it for a week. No negative posting on social media. Don't badmouth anybody. Don't jump into a thread that's all negative on hammering something. Just speak life. Find things positive to say. Moms and dads, I'm just as bad as you, so hear me preaching the mic as much as you can. Say positive things to your kids. Because parenting is tiring. And the things that come out of my mouth sometimes to my girls are horrible. Right? That we would honor, that we would praise, that we would speak life of. Number three goes right along with it. Number three is protect, protect others. Protect others. We say everyone in this world is a sinner and needing of Jesus. And yet when they do something wrong, we pounce on them. Think about that. Think about the reality that, that I go, yeah, man, they need Jesus and they need blah, blah. And then they say something to offend us and we go, that jerk. I can't believe right. We, miss, we lose the reality. We're here to protect. We're here to protect. And so when you hear that rumor, welcome to Leesburg. When you hear that rumor, you hear that thing said about that person, Is your first inclination to jump in and have the conversation? Or is your first inclination to protect? Protecting them is a spirit of honor. Jumping in is a spirit of dishonor. God, 
clean my heart up. Come on, anybody else today need a little bit of heart cleaning? Anybody else today, if you're honest with yourself, go, you know, I see a spirit of dishonor inside of me sometimes. And the way I say things and the way I'm speaking. And so, God, would you change something inside of me? Check this out, Proverbs 27 and 18. Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit. Check this. He who guards his master will be honored. In other words, he who this week guards his boss will be honored. He who guards his spouse, you know, even when they're on their worst day, and protects them, will be honored. You see that? That we would take care of and protect, like it's part of what we're supposed to do. John 17 and 18, he who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. What did we say? Honor is not something to seek and find. Honor is something to practice. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man who tru- of truth. There's nothing false about him. That we would learn to submit to those around us. And I'm going to end with this. Our word of wisdom number three. This is week three of our series. <coughs> Excuse me, this is the fill-in. Honor is the conduit of God's power in my life. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. There's this amazing story in Matthew. And Jesus has been healing and doing miracles, casting out demons. I mean, doing all this stuff, right? I mean, just amazing stuff. And then the story says he comes to a city. And the city is kind of a hometown to him. And in that hometown, it says that there's a spirit of dishonor. That they look at him and they go, Jesus, that, yeah, that's the carpenter's kid, right? Yeah, I remember, I remember him. Yeah, what, so what? Big deal about him. But, but in, his, in his mama, the one that had him before she was married, and there's the spirit of dishonor that happens, and this is what the Bible says. This is crazy. One of those verses I want to sit down and talk with Jesus about one day. Because it says this. Because of their spirit of dishonor, he could not perform miracles in that town. The creator of the universe was limited by a spirit of dishonor. Could it be that the power of God is not working in me, in my family, in my office, in my school, because I'm carrying a spirit of dishonor and holding back the power of God that he can release in my life? Could it be that Jesus could do miraculous things if I would decide to be honored? Who is it that you need to honor? Let me, let, me, let me ask you to be personal right where you are right now. Who is it that if you're honest, you go, i got to go back and reframe my thinking. i got to go back and, and, and change the way I'm talking to a teacher, a coach, a boss, some other authority, a pastor somewhere else maybe that you were hurt. And I've got to change my heart, me, not because they deserve it, but because I decide I'm going to have a fear for God, an awe and reverence for my almighty God, creator of the universe, amazing love and passion for me who died on the cross, that I could crawl up out of the nasty grave life that was Mike Matheny in the previous life and be born again. And so I choose this day to have a spirit of honor. I choose, God, tame my tongue, tame my heart, tame my mind, that I might honor. And when I do that, that I might see the power come through in my life and in my family and in my town. Could it be if a little small church meeting in an auditorium in a high school would choose to honor anyone and everyone in our community? We have some godly leaders in our community. We got some raunchy leaders in our community. None of them deserve our honor. We decide to be honored. Does that make sense to anybody today? Would you decide this week? Would you decide today 
to have a spirit of honor and ask God to clean out a spirit of dishonor that's inside of your heart. Let me, ask, let me pray for you now, and let's ask God to do that for us today. Father, I feel conviction myself. I spent the whole time preparing this message even today. I can be so dishonoring, unkind with my words, so opinionated, like I'm the smartest person on the planet. So we ask, just like the psalm, created me a clean heart, so God. Forgive me, God, for being, dis- for being dishonoring. Help me, God. I, I want to do this, but it feels hard. I feel like I've created a habit of doing this. And so help me, God, to change those habits that I might show honor to Jesus, I want to see your power working in my life and in my family and in my neighborhood and my work and in my community here. So help us today, we have. With your eyes still closed, if maybe there's somebody here today and you would say, I've never honored God by giving him my life. And it's really simple to do that. You just say, Jesus, your Lord, and I admit that I need you, and I'm a sinner, and I thank you for that. So I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to give you some simple words to pray, nothing special about my words. What is so important is your heart. And if you pray this sincerely, the creator of the universe will do some miraculous things in your life. So if that's you today, pray something like this. Jesus, today I give you my life. I honor you by giving you my life. Come into my heart. Make it clean. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of the things I've done. Thank you for loving me right where I am. As best as I can understand, I'm going to try to serve you from this day forward. I ask it in the holy name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen.